I realized I have to unmute myself. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bogdan Banu, and I am the president and founder of Romanians of DC, a community-based organization in the nation's capital. Uh, we have been around for a number of years now, and we have been actively engaged with uh, La Blues Romaine, celebrating the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse uh, each year around the June 24th day. Um, actually, in 2015, uh, with the help of the Romanian Embassy, uh, we had obtained the first official recognition of the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse when the mayor of DC proclaimed that day to be the day of the Romanian folk costume in the nation's capital. Um, I am very honored to uh, be hosting today's discussion along with um, our partner at the Romanian Cultural Institute uh, in New York. Um, and uh, very grateful to have as our guest uh, today, Her Excellency Ambassador Simona uh, Niculescu, who is the Romanian uh, representative to uh, UNESCO, uh, Dr. Sarah Hume, who is a professor and a curator at the Kent State University, um, and Andrea Tanasescu, who is the founder of uh, the uh, La Plus Roman movement and president of the IA Association. Um, I will introduce them a little bit more in detail um, as we'll give them a chance to uh, make their remarks. Uh, just a few um, housekeeping um, rules um, for those who are li would like to ask questions. Um, I would invite them to join us on Zoom. Uh, they may do so by um, going to Romanians of DC and the, ev the events, um, and then they find they can find a link there. Those will be the ones who will be able to ask questions of our panelists. Um, and um, also uh, for anybody else who would like to watch uh, this, uh, just to know that those will be available later, later on and um, um, as a recording. Um, with that, I do wanted to also frame a little bit why we are having this discussion today. Um, we are getting ready to celebrate the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse in, uh, on June 24th, as I mentioned. Um, and this has become really a global uh, event. And, setting up the tone for that conversation, we wanted to uh, talk a little bit about how the Romanian blouse had gone from being something that was uh, more or less relegated to the villages in, in the countryside in Rom of Romania, uh, maybe 100, 150 years ago, to really becoming a cultural icon, a, a fashion icon, something that we see often on TV without really knowing uh, that that may be a Romanian blouse. Um, we've seen a lot of designers who have um, uh, been inspired by the Romanian folk costume and use that in their collections, uh, sometimes uh, without giving credit uh, where credit would be due. So we wanted to also take this opportunity to educate people about uh, why this is an important uh, symbol to uh, Romanians, uh, but I think more broadly to the universal culture. Um, and talk a little bit about how the blouse had gone from being uh, something that was uh, maybe an identity in a specific village uh, to really becoming something that is more emblematic for Romanian culture uh, more broadly. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, uh, Dorian Brana, who is the director of the Romanian Cultural Institute um, in New York, um, to also talk a little bit about uh, their partnership with us. Uh, and thank you, Dorian, for, for agreeing to, to, to be our partner in the event and talk a little bit about uh, maybe what uh, Ichere is doing um, as it relates to the Romanian blast. Um, thank you, Bogdan. Uh, good afternoon, good morning to our distinguished uh, panelists and uh, to all our viewers. Um, we are very, very excited to uh, participate in this um, project. We are, this is not our first partnership with uh, Romanians of uh, DC. Uh, one of the, the several, and um, there is no doubt that uh, Romanians of DC is one of the most uh, active uh, Romanian-American organization in the United States. Uh, for us at the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York, working with the Romanian-American um, uh, associations, organizations, is not an option uh, uh, among others. Uh, on the contrary, it's a uh, strategic choice because we know very well that um, our um, cultural diplomacy, public diplomacy effort um, cannot be accomplished uh, uh, and cannot be successful, impactful uh, without a very close collaboration with uh, the most active Romanian-American organizations. 
And for us, this is um, um, a strategic line that we are following um, uh, very, very closely and uh, seriously. Um, uh, frankly, I, um, uh, I, when it comes to strategic communication, public diplomacy, uh, nation branding, um, I haven't seen such a, an amazing uh, panel in a long time. And I'm very, very pleased to, um, to greet um, Ambassador uh, Simona Miculescu. Um, I, would, uh, I would say the foremost, uh, um, uh, the foremost um, expert in, uh, in um, uh, public diplomacy and cultural diplomacy uh, in Romania and, uh, and beyond, and uh, a dear friend and mentor. Um, it is my pleasure also to greet uh, Dr. Sarah Hume, um, a leading expert working at the intersection of uh, economics, politics, and fashion uh, with uh, amazing, uh, amazing results. And last uh, but not uh, least, by far not least, um, Andrea Tanasescu, also uh, a good friend uh, and uh, the author of uh, one of the greatest um, uh, international marketing and nation branding coups in the recent history of, uh, uh, of uh, Romania and uh, a um, uh, cultural entrepreneur that I admire a lot. I, I, we are very pleased to participate in this um, uh, in this project, in this event, because we are talking about one of the most powerful um, uh, Romanian artifacts, um, which has gained uh, a, a well-deserved international reputation. The Romanian blouse uh, is instantly recognizable in all corners of the world. It is a powerful, um, a powerful um, icon, a very important brand, cultural brand, when it comes to um, Romania's uh, international reputation and image. Uh, it has become a very important research theme for anthropologists, but not only for anthropologists. And of course, it's a source of inspiration for designers uh, and uh, artists uh, all over the world. Uh, for us as um, uh, cultural diplomats, as public diplomats, uh, is crucial in our efforts to promote um, our culture and our values, uh, because it's one of those um, rare, I would say, artifacts that uh, um, embod embodies um, something very personal, very close to our identity, and at the same time, very universal. Uh, and I would mention, I'm sure that the panelists who know a lot, a lot more about this subject than I do, uh, will, uh, will speak extensively on this subject, but I would mention uh, in passing only um, the, um, as values, unifying values and universal uh, and values that are relevant also when it comes to our identity, um, the, uh, the, um, the mastery of the uh, execution, the uh, the beauty and the the, uh, the beauty of the uh, of the artistic choices, uh, the uh, natural products used in the making of these uh, uh, objects, and the symbolism and the message that this uh, um, humble object, apparently humble object. Um, a project. All of these are, of course, uh, something that we hold very dear in our identity, but also are very relevant when it comes to today's um, artistic and uh, fashion approaches. So again, um, we're very, very um, happy to be participating in this uh, project. Congratulations, uh, Bogdan and um, Romanians of DC for putting it uh, together. Uh, and good luck to all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dorian, for those uh, very kind words. And I apologize if anybody is seeing sort of images shifting back and forth. I know I'm having uh, bandwidth uh, problems here. I'm in an area that has a little bit of a uh, 
thunderstorm going on right now. Um, and I think the internet is uh, coming in and out a little bit. Um, I do wanted to uh, introduce um, Her Excellency Amb Ambassador Simona Miculescu, uh, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for many, many years uh, when she actually uh, served here in Washington, DC um, as the press um, um, attache at the Romanian embassy. Uh, and we're very um, grateful to see that um, someone who is such a strong supporter of the Romanian uh, blouse and then of the traditional Romanian folk costume has now uh, gone on to become the Romanian representative, a permanent representative to the UNESCO in, in Paris. Um, ambassador Simona um, Irela Miculescu has been serving as uh, ambassador extraordinary and plenty plenipotentiary and permanent delegate of Romania to UNESCO since uh, January 2021. Um, after holding the position of representative of the UN Secretary General and head of the UN office in uh, Belgrade, Serbia between 2015 and 2020. Uh, prior to that, she was a permanent representative of Romania to the UN, uh, where she had several positions, uh, including vice president of UNICEF executive board, vice president of assembly of states, um, and it's a very long list of, uh, of uh, very distinguished accomplishments that she had. Um, I would also just mention very briefly that um, she had uh, served as the uh, with the um, OSE mission in Kosovo, and between 2000 and 2004, she was uh, served as foreign policy advisor to the president of Romania. Uh, with the rank of minister, becoming eventually the first woman uh, in the Romanian diplomatic corps uh, to achieve the rank of diplomat. She holds a doctorate uh, honoris causa beneficiorum uh, from uh, the Western University in Timisoara, as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Magna Cum Laude from Babes Boya University in Cluj-Napoca. She's married and has two children, and congratulations, I think, uh, from what I've seen are in order for her, at least one of her children's. Uh, Simona, thank you so much for, for being uh, here. And um, I'll let you uh, take the floor and, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, UNESCO and the Romanian blouse. Sure, thank you. Uh, bonjour de Paris. Um, <laughs> I, I have the pleasure to greet you from a city where we have 30 three degrees today. So I'm kind of surprised that Florida doesn't, uh, doesn't surpass us. Okay. Well, anyway, um, since I, uh, I, <laughs> I was promoted to the rank of diplomat in 2002, <laughs> uh, you're so sweet, Bogdan. Um, I, I got the, the, the honor of uh, being the first woman ambassador uh, in 2002. Okay. Uh, my diplomatic career actually um, celebrates 30 years this year. So yeah, I'm as young as that. But let's go back to the subject. The subject is not me, even if, of course, you were so generous, you and Doru, in describing me in beautiful and uh, uh, colorful um, lines. So uh, let me say this from the outset. This is not for you because you know me very well, but you know that I am a firm, passionate, and lifelong believer in the role of cultural diplomacy that you, Doro, practice so fantastically in New York, and I'm so proud of you. Actually, I'm the believer in the role of cultural diplomacy in peace building and conflict resolution. I think it is an absolutely crucial platform to build bridges over troubled water. No wonder uh, that it is the quintessential part of the slogan and of the constitution of UNESCO. Uh, the organization that I have um, the honor of, uh, of um, where I have the honor of representing Romania. Well, one of the most recent exercises and maybe the dearest to my heart exercises of cultural diplomacy that I had the honor of starting my mandate with uh, here at UNESCO was submitting the file of the Romanian traditional blouse with embroidery on the shoulder this is how complicated the translation gets in English. In Romanian, it's Kamasha Kualtica in, in, in Romanian. And in English, it's the Romanian traditional blouse with embroidery on the shoulder, uh, together with the Republic of Moldova, to be included, of course, in the UNESCO list of uh, intangible cultural heritage. I would like to mention that it happened exactly this year when Romania celebrates 65 years since joining uh, UNESCO. So what a lovely way to celebrate. What a meaningful way to celebrate. Well, um, if for your, in order for your um, audience to, 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 to be well informed, 
because some um, uh, have the feeling that we already, you know, the, that this Romanian blouse is already inscribed in the UNESCO uh, uh, intangible cultural heritage. Well, no, we just submitted the file and the procedures take about one year and a half. So we will pray to have uh, a positive decision uh, by the end of 2022. Um, the Romanian blouse, also called Ia or Camasha Qualtiza, is clearly for me at least, and for most of us, the most emblematic piece of Romanian folklore and artistic expression. Becoming, becoming uh, over the years a real fashion icon and one of the best cultural brands of Romania, uh, as, uh, as uh, Dorian Brana rightfully said. But I would let the wonderful experts that we have uh, to talk about uh, this, uh, this, this marvel, this gem of the Romanian traditions. But I would like to just say from the UNESCO perspective that actually ethnic clothing in general is one of the most visible identity badges that also contributes to interpersonal communication. Uh, the stitching of traditional garments promotes the knowledge of the creators about the universe and, and the humanity uh, through the symbols used in the ornamentation. And these symbols send uh, encoded messages about the status, social position, the age of beneficiaries. It is so fascinating. I, I cannot have enough of telling my colleagues here in UNESCO, in UNESCO about, about this. So that is one of the reasons why we should all cherish and protect the eternity and the authenticity of our traditions. Um, let me say another thing that I, I need to say. My dear Andrea Diana Tanasescu, you know that I, I'm, I'm the biggest fan of yours because you are the most fervent champion of the Romanian blouse that I ever knew. You created the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse, the Cultural Fashion Day, uh, the Blues Roman E Association, uh, and you promoted like no other the preservation of the Romanian textile heritage, cultural and sustainable fashion. So I wanted to say this also here publicly, even more publicly than in other opportunities, because you contributed clearly and decisively to the rebirth and renewed interest in traditional Romanian culture on a national, but also on a global scale. So I take a bow, my dear Andrea. And you know that I cherish very much what you do. And I will always support you, like from, from the beginning. Well, thank God you have such allies as Bogdan. I mean, Bogdan, that uh, uh, moment when that defining moment for all the Romanian communities all over the world, when uh, you, uh, you managed to get the first official recognition of the Romanian blouse in the United States. Uh, with the mayor of, the, of Washington DC who declared June 24 as the day of the Romanian blouse and of the Romanian full costume. What a beautiful diplomatic victory. I mean, you are a real ambassador of the Romanian culture there. So I'm, I'm, I'm in awe. But, uh, you know, when you were an intern in our embassy and I was just uh, a very young and sh not shy, but, uh, you know, uh, excited uh, press secretary, the first press secretary ever of the Romanian embassy in Washington DC, we never knew that we will meet along the way and we will struggle for the same noble causes, which is preserving and protecting our dear Romanian heritage. And, you know, I appreciate that day also because um, it, it became a unique way for the Romanian community to connect uh, with one another and to connect with their roots and uh, equally important to serve as a novel tool for cultural diplomacy. Just a few words. Can I, can I, do I have a few more minutes? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, I want people to understand that we here at the permanent delegation and in general, uh, the Romanian authorities, uh, their perspective is the following. Romania's relationship with UNESCO is bi-directional. We look at the quality of a member country, both in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, rights, but also responsibilities. And also 
the involvement of a country in the activity of an organization presupposes both challenges and uh, opportunities. So this dual nature is very, very faithfully illustrated by the issue of heritage um, subsumed by the cultural sector within UNESCO. In addition, those responsibilities are none other than those we have for ourselves, for our nations in the constant effort to strengthen and assert credibility and predictability um, as a partner on the multilateral stage, as well as, as, well as for the, our future generations. Compared to future generations, the main emphasis in terms of heritage must be on sustainability, on how we protect and pass on a heritage, whether tangible or um, uh, intangible. Uh, one more thing that I would like to highlight here is the following. It must never be forgotten that the agreement of communities living in the area of heritage sites, for instance, uh, formulated for the whole series of long-term protection, conservation, and where appropriate enhancement measures is essential. This is all the more evident in the case of the intangible heritage, because we're talking about this here, uh, whose main feature from the perspective of UNESCO is vitality and viability. That is why the organization has been using for some time the phrase living heritage. An intangible heritage element does not exist uh, distinctly and separately from the populations, the communities that maintain it. The, the Kalush ritual, the lad's dance, uh, the craftsmanship of Horezu ceramics, the caroling or the doina, uh, the traditional wall carpet craftsmanship, um, or the cultural practices associated to the 1st of March, Martishor. And I mentioned, as you uh, might have guessed, uh, what we already have inscribed in uh, the, uh, the intangible cultural heritage cannot be conceived without people. We do not include only elements in the representative lists, but the crafts, beliefs, cultural practices associated with them. We always have to keep in mind this when we talk about intangible cultural heritage. Um, so as an immediate consequence in the effort to identify, document, and, and, and propose a, a good or an element uh, to UNESCO, a genuine involvement of local communities is absolutely necessary. The sine qua non warrantor of the sustainability of an element. At the same time, the notion of local communities should obviously uh, not be reduced to administrative authorities alone, but they also have to include the economic ones. It has to include everyone. And this message is especially for your audience because we all have the responsibility to protect and promote our, our heritage. Um, anyway, let's hope that we will have good news next year regarding the, the files submitted at UNESCO. And, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to all you champions of, uh, of this novel cause of, of, of uh, protecting the Romanian blouse, the Romanian traditions. And, and I'm including the distinguished panelists, the distinguished moderators, but also the audience, uh, which is very important for me uh, here and for us here in this event. Because clearly, since they joined us, they are interested in, in our cause. Um, I would encourage all of them and you to carry on the message conveyed by generations of women who have lived, lived on our land. They are encoded in absolutely every symbol, in absolutely every sign and motive carried away by the, by the golden hands uh, who have created real works of art. The remarkable cultural heritage of our countries um, is the most authentic and important instrument of communication and affirmation of our cultural identity. And it is, it is time to protect it and recognize it as a universal value of humanity in order to carry on a story about who we were who we are and who we could be. And by the way of uh, who we are in this moment, I just want to, 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 to let you know that also due to our wonder lady, Andrea Diana Tanescu, this year, Fragonard, the most prestigious perfumerie of France, features all year long 
in its shops all over the territory of France, a beautiful exhibition of um, uh, where you can see amazing uh, masterpieces by art, Romanian artisans, but also art inspired by the Romanian uh, traditions. And it's called Couleur Romaine. It is an absolutely amazing tribute to Romania all year long in France. So if you visit France or if you live in France, just go for it. You will fill your heart with beauty and uh, vibrant, uh, vibrant colors. Um, I would end uh, at least this part uh, uh, quoting Marcus Garvey, who rightfully said, uh, a people without the knowledge of their past, history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. And actually, like you, Bogdan, uh, I said many times when I was meeting the Romanian communities all over the world that they, uh, for instance, whenever I had a speech at the Romanian Day in New York City, I always used to say, God bless you, you have Romanian roots and American wings. So let's keep this combination all over the world. Let's promote the Romanian roots, adding the creativity of the wings of the countries where we live. Thank you. Thank you, Simona, for, for that wonderful presentation and, and so eloquently talking about and passionately, I may add, about why <laughs> this is important, I think, for everybody to understand uh, how uh, we can make something of the Romanian blouse on an international stage of the Romanian culture. And, the, and, and we all very much appreciate that the work that you're doing. And uh, I, I speak, I know, for on Andrea's behalf when we say that we are so grateful to have such a an ambassador, not just in a diplomatic sense, but in a cultural and in, in, in the sense of someone who re, it's there to promote Romanian cultures and traditions. And thank you so much for, for, for your kind remarks. I have to deserve you guys, so I got to work hard. <laughs> thank you. I do want to introduce our next speaker, who is uh, Dr. Sarah Hume. Uh, she's an associate professor and curator at, at uh, Kent State University Museum. Her research uh, um, in the history of dress has focused on the intersection between fashionable and traditional dress, as well as the global reach of the fashion industry. She also studies the relationship between evolving fashionable aesthetics and the underlying forces of economic and political change. She earned her PhD in modern European history from the University of Chicago. She's currently completing a book which examines the development and preservation of traditional or folk dress practices in Alsace in the face of pressure both from the political conflict and mainstream fashion. She holds a BA in art from the Yale University and an MA in museum studies, costume and textile from the Fashion Institute um, of Technology. However, we have invited her here today to speak in her capacity as a curator of the Stitched Regional Dress uh, from Across Europe, which is an exhibition currently ongoing um, at the Kent State University Museum, an exhibition which features quite a few pieces of Romanian traditional folk costume. Um, and we wanted to have someone with an American voice that could talk a little bit about, I asked her to, to, to mention a little bit, what made her, uh, what was the idea behind the exhibition and maybe how are the Romanian pieces and in general, I think the traditional folk pieces that are in the exhibition being perceived by an American public that may uh, be oftentimes uh, their first exposure to the Romanian folk costume and to the folk costumes of, of Europe uh, through her exhibition. Um, so um, Dr. Hume, um, please make sure you unmute yourself and you have the mic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I hope this um, is successful. Um, so there we go. So that is my, um, my slideshow. Um, so it features pieces from our exhibition, Stitched, um, Regional Dress Across Europe. And um, so we see that I've featured like our prominent piece. Um, we really focus a lot on the Romanian blouse and sort of peasant blouses more generally. Um, but the focus of the exhibition is to look sort of comparatively at regional dress across Europe um, and to sort of to sort of explore the commonalities um, that you see in different areas. And of course, um, one of the things that's so essential to regional dress is that it is regional, that it is very specific to a place, that it symbolizes um, um, 
the, the particular and the regional and the local. Um, but there's common threads that you see across regional dress um, from all over Europe. And so when I organized the exhibition, I looked at these common themes in order to group the pieces. And I grouped them by the sort of physical attributes, the um, the types of ornamentation and the and the design elements of the garments. And so I'm going to look today at, at sort of six of these um, main groupings. And so the brocading, these sort of floral patterns that you see on them, um, the execution of the of the embroidery in yarn, um, the the metal work. So we think about um, regional dress as being sort of peasant costume and sort of humble in that sense, but these are often like extremely expensive and extremely valuable and or adorned with metal. Um, and then a more simple um, element are stripes um, and then lace and knit uh, pieces and then, and then finally braid. Um, so I'm just going to sort of quickly go through the different sections and some of the pieces that are highlighted and focusing. We have a lot of Romanian pieces in our collection owing to sort of the history of the Kent State University Museum had ties with people who were really interested in, in sort of Romanian anthropology. Um, and so we have a, a really robust collection of Romanian traditional dress. In fact, that is sort of the biggest component of our collection. And so it's well represented in the um, collection. But um, so the first section, Brocade, um, this piece is actually Hungarian. Um, and it you really see the sort of quality of combining different elements of different features. Um, there's there's just this sort of busyness to, to the aesthetic of a lot of this regional dress. Um, and so you see the, the elements of, of the brocaded um, floral patterns, which were very common in a lot of the, the dress. And it's, I think the further you go west, the more there's elements of, um, of these sort of brocaded ribbons and stuff that are, that are manufactured and they're purchased and they're sort of, they're added to the garments. Um, and that's a little bit more of a feature of, um, of German, French, sort of um, in Hungarian in this case dress. Um, and then here we go, here's a bonnet. Uh, and again, you see these, these manufactured ribbons, which are extremely ornate and beautiful. Um, and these pieces are in, a lot of them are means of demonstrating these or showcasing these elaborate textiles. So again, here we see um, this combination of velvet with brocaded ribbon um, and, and it's quite ornate. Um, and then stripes are another section of it. And the stripes, a lot of the pieces in this section are, are very much hand woven. The hand work is in, extremely important in this and stripes are a very sort of fundamental way of, of creating pattern in, in fabric. And it has to do with the underlying structure of the loom is going to create stripes either in the horizontal or the vertical vertical direction. And so this is an example from Portugal. Um, and you can see um, they have created these beautiful, like really bold color palettes um, are characteristic of some of these regions, um, particularly here. You can see the Portuguese costume is quite um, bright. But here we see, here's our Romanian example. Um, and so this is from Altinia and um, it would actually belong to Queen Marie of Romania, who was a big proponent of regional dress, um, a big supporter. And um, this outfit, you could see the sort of, that the stripes are not just simple sort of straightforward um, lines in the horizontal or vertical direction. They have this tapestry weave that they've created the stripes on the on the apron and then the sort of the overskirt. There's there's a basic striping pattern that's on the sash. And then you can see the bands of patterning and in the colors on the blouse as well. So here we have this beautiful blouse. Um, and of course it's full length. So it goes the full length and um, appears at the bottom underneath the hem. Um, and it's just this, you know, beautifully embroidered um, blouse. Um, oh gosh, I went out of that. I hit the wrong button. Um, and so here um, we see the lace. Um, is the next section and um, lace is very characteristic of a, of a lot of the regions and it is often used in headdresses. Um, so the the way that the the dress really identifies a region um, and becomes a very iconic element of that region's identity and um, 
it, it's hard to find an, exa um, an example that's more iconic of a region than the sort of that Dutch lace bonnet. Um, and it's used a lot in advertising. And so it becomes really iconic and it comes to represent the entire country. But the, this actual particular bonnet in um, the Netherlands is from this one region of Volendam, um, this sort of sort of fishing villages. Um, and so you can see the way it is worn in this whole outfit. Um, but then this bonnet, you know, just becomes really iconic and sort of used to sell cheese and things like that. Um, and so this is just the characteristic Dutch bonnet. Um, and lace um, is this sort of beautiful element that is, um, is really iconic. You see this in other regions, um, like Brittany and France is known for its its lace bonnets as well. But of course, it's the shape of the lace bonnet that's going to really identify these different regions, one from another. Um, and so here's an outfit um, that's from Slovakia. Um, and again, it's covered with lace on each different part. So the, the vest has lace, the sleeves have lace, um, the apron has lace as well. And it's these really bright colored lace um, in this case. And um, there's this cut work on the sleeves um, that are embroidered with black. And so you see this contrasting fabric on the sleeve as well. So um, these really um, sort of distinctive elements that highlight that this is from this particular region of Slovakia is very characteristic of that region. Um, and, then, and then the embroidery in sort of fashionable dress embroidery through the sort of the 19th and into the 20th century is often done with silk floss but in folk costume a lot of times the embroidery is done in yarn um, and so this is a characteristic that you see in folk um, folk dress from from all over Europe and um, particularly in, um, in Scandinavia you see this and so we have these examples from Norway where it's executed in um, in yarn. And what's interesting in this area um, is that the matching of, of this. So you see that you see exactly the same um, yarn embroidery motif on the on the vest um, that you see on the purse, that you see on the bonnet, that you see on the hem of the skirt. So it's a very matchy matchy, um, very coordinated look. Um, and you also see yarn embroidery on this example from Romania. Um, and you see this different kind of style and the and this patterning of it looks almost woven. Um, it, it evokes um, sort of a, a woven or brocaded look to it because the direction of the thread is going in the direction of the, um, of the fabric, the woven fabric. Um, so it's a very distinctive sort of style of embroidery. And again, you see this, this great combination of colors. Um, you see the hot pink with the red, um, which is sort of color combination, which, you know, fashionable, fashionable circles sometimes frown on, on mixing these kind of really bold, you know, you hot pink and red and blue and green. Um, so it's very bold and very colorful uh, patterns that you see. Um, and then metalwork, as I mentioned from the start, um, we think about this as peasant costume, we think about it as very humble, um, but these examples, some of them are incredibly ornate and would be quite expensive. Um, and this, um, this is from Albania, and so we're getting into the southern region where there's a lot of Turkish Ottoman influence, and you see this gold work. Um, you see it in Albania, you see Greek examples that are similar, um, so in that sort of area of the, of the continent. Um, you see these heavy, these heavy cords of gold that are in these looping patterns, um, and then you see the ribbons um, that are that are attached as well, and these are extremely heavy. So that's one style of this sort of metalwork. Um, and then in Romania, you also have a lot of me metallic elements. You have a lot of sequins. Um, so you can see these Romanian blouses with the sleeves where it's where it's. Um, where it's embroidered, um, they'll they'll add there'll be the addition of these sequins on it as well. But then again, on this um, on this skirt on the uh, well the apron of it, you can see the metallic elements here that are um, woven into the pattern um, as well. And this piece, like not only does it have it on the blouse and this the apron or the skirt, um, the sash also has metallic elements in it. And this veil is brocaded with little highlights of gold that flash in it. So it's it's very um, very decorative, like all the different elements with with the um, metallic additions. 
And then the final um, section that I'll talk about of the exhibition is the braid. Um, and all of the examples before I think that I've talked about are women's wear. And we think about, we think about traditional dress as um, persisting um, with women longer than it does for men. And this is true in a lot of regions. Um, and so there's some areas, um, you know, like I was talking about the Dutch example, and you don't really see examples of the men's Dutch costume and, and correspondence with it as much. But in Romania, you do see a lot of the persistence of those men's wear and the really distinctive styles. Um, and the, for instance, the shirt, so the men wear the heavily embroidered shirt as well. And you see that here, but you see this beautiful um, suit, the sort of the vest, the jacket and the pants that are all in these beautiful braided patterns. Um, and, and this sort of the way it's created a lapel, um, but it's through applique and this em embroidery with the braid. Um, so this this really ornamented male dress is quite um, is quite interesting and noteworthy um, among the examples that we have. So that's the way the um, exhibition is organized in the first section is organized around these different um, types of ornamentation and these these certain elements that you see that are common throughout the continent. Um, and then the second half of the exhibition, um, it just looks at the blouse, at the, the sort of the peasant blouse and all these different examples that you see in regional dress. Um, and it and it's the one element that's really common to all um, regional dress across Europe. You'll see this in every example. Every single um, example is going to involve the, sort of the basic blouse or, or chemise or shirt. Um, and, and it's true of men's and women's wear. And so this, um, this wall just sort of highlights the differences in, in the different examples, sort of the commonalities, but also the difference, how they differ from each other. Um, the first two on the right are from Slovakia, and they're actually the same sort of village and you can see sort of the differences in how the ornamentation is placed. And then we have um, we have a Romanian example, which I'll show you in a picture um, next, a, a better um, picture of that. Um, and then some Romanian blouses that you see, um, and then more Romanian blouses on the wall. And you can just see the differences in the way the sleeves are sort of cut and the way they're attached to the body, whether they're sort of square, whether there's a yoke. Um, and then um, the final two examples, one is from Macedonia and one is Greek. Uh, is Greek. And so you can see sort of the placement of the ornamentation on it, how it varies based on what's going to go over it. So is there going to be a vest? Is there going to be a, an apron over it? And so um, they sort of carefully place the, the embroidery in order to um, complement where the other pieces are going to go. And um, so here's the examples of the Romanian pieces. Um, so here's this actually, it seems to be a boy's outfit um, and it's beautifully embroidered. Um, and, um, in, and for the both the, the, the shirt and the matching pants. Um, and it has these, these sequins that, are, that dangle from the, the hem of the shirt. Um, and then here is a um, beautiful um, Romanian blouse. And again, you can see the details of the, the handwork and how, how much attention there is to, to the details and the way the seams are executed and the finish of the hem. It's just all um, such extraordinary handwork and attention. And then the final section of the exhibition looks at um, traditional blouses and the way that they are interpreted in fashionable dress and the way they've informed fashion over, over the century. And so it goes back as far as the 1920s. So we have a few examples in our collection of, of things that were for fashionable dress would have been worn by, um, by women, by Americans, um, but they really reflect a lot of these elements from traditional dress. So the smocking, um, this one, this example is mostly, it's in the smocking. And then we have, a, um, for instance, an advertisement for um, Russian style dresses. And so you have a lot of these, these um, immigrants who come to United States, who come to New York, or who come to Paris um, from Eastern Europe, who's, who bring their skills and they really inform a lot of the fashionable dress that happens. Um, so we see this example. And then the final example that we have um, is Yves Saint Laurent. So he was looking at, he did a um, Russian collection. And so he was looking at peasant costume and he has sort of his take on it um, that was kind of interesting and involved a lot of Paisley um, and um, and sort of these these blouses. So he took the inspiration um, and in, interpreted it um, rather liberally. 
in his own way. Um, and so here this sort of just concludes with um, the different regions and you can see how, how it comes from all over from Norway all the way down to Albania and all the way over to Portugal. Um, so you see examples from all over the continent and you see these sort of common elements um, and yet all of it is very distinctive. I mean, there's, there's both this fact that there's common themes that you see in regional dress all over Europe, but, but it is the particular that is, that is really the beauty of re regional dress, that it represents a very small place, that it comes out of um, the distinctive culture of the region that it represents. So thank you very much. It's been a, really a pleasure to, to speak to all of you. Dr. Hume, thank you so much for, for that wonderful presentation. And we are really glad to see that the Romanian folk costume is so well represented in a prestigious museum in, in the United States. And I hope that uh, it, it's something that will allow a, a, the public to be informed about it and educated. Because as you said, this is something that is reflected on in a lot of the fashions that people see. And I think it's important for, for people to understand where those um, uh, elements are coming, to understand the distinction and the uniqueness of the costume th that it represents. Um, just in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Andrea, um, who um, for many of those who are following us might be a very familiar face, but um, Andrea Tanasescu is the creator and founder of La Blues Romaine Movement uh, and uh, of the uh, Facebook uh, page uh, that has contributed dec decisively to the rebirth and renewed interest in the traditional Romanian culture at a global scale. Uh, she's the creator of the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse, which was first celebrated in 2013, um, at the Brincush Week and the Cultural Fashion Day, and is also the president of La Blues Romaine IA Association, a non-government organization that promotes the preservation of Romanian textile heritage, cultural and sustainable fashion. In 2017, um, Andrea also started Give Credit that militates for culturally responsible uh, design. Now she is currently working on the development of La Blues Romaine platform, coordinating Give, Cre Give Back Credit uh, to heritage communities, which is an European cultural cooperation project that aims to reset the place of traditional crafts within the new trend for a more sustainable fashion while promoting and preserving the specificity and mastery of artisan. Um, it is organized in partnership uh, with uh, Gordana uh, Grup Grupšević. Grupšević, Superstar Culture from the Republic of Serbia, the National Institute of Heritage from Romania, and the University for the Creative Arts, uh, Epson Business School in the United Kingdom, and supported by the Creative uh, Europe Program of the European Commission. Uh, this has been a really uh, great uh, accomplishment for this to get this kind of visibility and uh, I wanna congratulate Andrea for that. Um, Andrea has studied law and public relation and has been involved in the fashion, media and movie industry for the more than 20 years as a talent agent and casting director for major international film productions. Um, Andrea, I will let you um, take the floor and talk a little bit about um, the Universal uh, Day of the uh, Romanian blouse and uh, that we're all looking forward to celebrating in just a few days. Thank you very much, Bogdan. And uh, thank you to all your distinguished um, panelists and partners. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by your um, welcoming and by your remarks about my uh, activity and especially to the La Blues Romaine community. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador Simona Miculescu, you are a true friend and a true supporter. Um, and what a beautiful coincidence that I remember uh, and our first uh, Romanian blouse uh, day, you were actually um, um, leading the um, United Nations uh, uh, with Romania as a vice president, yes, of the organization. Um, and now you are uh, presenting uh, the, to the world the Romanian uh, Kamasha Kualtica, Romanian traditional blouse as a candidate for the intangible cultural heritage of the humanity. So beautiful. Thank you so much for your constant support in the, in the last nine years almost of La Blues Romaine. Uh, thank you, Dorian. Um, for your warm introduction. Uh, I remember so, uh, 
um, it was so dear to me our meeting in Washington DC two years ago. I was full of emotions like I am today, but uh, your support and, um, and your partnership with Bogdan was um, uh, almost like a, like a wing for me in that moment. Thank you very much. Um, Bogdan, um, I have no words. <laughs> you have uh, an amazing um, activity in, uh, in Washington DC. You made like wonders with the Romanian community. I'm always with tears in my eyes every 24 of June when the Romanians of DC and the Romanians and the friends of Romanians from um, all over the United States are coming to uh, celebrate with you the Romanian blouse. And thank you for uh, uh, making our movement officially first time. You know, it was not in Romania, but actually United States. Thank you very much. And also Dr. Sarah Hume, thank you for the constant inspiration that our movement, our page, has brought from the website of uh, Kent State University Museum. And uh, as far as I know, the collection you have is part donated by Princess Ilana of Romania, the Romanian pieces. And uh, she was, and she is an angel for our movement. And I will let you um, um, discover in few slides, a story of inspiration and my answer why the Romanian blouse has this global impact. Uh, I'll share my presentation, just a second. Uh, okay, here we are, just a second. Uh, I called it Romanian blouse, Ia, a story of magic and resilience. Uh, and I'm starting with Queen Marie of Romania, which for me is the original influencer, is the original trendsetter. Uh, Queen Maria of Romania was born like Princess Maria Alexandra Victoria of Edinburgh on 29 of October, 1875, and was uh, the um, niece of Queen. Uh, she was born into the British royal family and her parents were Prince Albert, Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, and Grand Duchess, uh, and her mother, Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrova of Russia, and she was the daughter of Queen Victoria of uh, um, um, uh, the British Empire. So uh, she was uh, destined, you know, to have such a, such a, uh, an impact not only on the Romanian blouse, but I think her impact was um, um, on the cultural diplomacy uh, from around the world. Um, Queen Mary of Romania um, has made something very courageous. Uh, her, as uh, Walter uh, Littlefield uh, wrote in New York in 1935, the gracious patronage of many Romanians movements has endeavored Queen Mary to Romanians, particularly to the women. Through her efforts and those of her daughters, the world has learned to appreciate the peasant uh, arts and the crafts of Romania. She has done uh, much toward causing a revival of the home manufacture of Romanian textiles and ceramics, which just before war were being replaced by German aniline dyes and Austrian pottery. Andrea, she has, yes. Sorry to interrupt. I don't know if you're meant to go to the slide, but we are still seeing just the first one. Yes, I'm going to the slides. We're only seeing the first one on the screen. Okay, now you're seeing the, uh, the, the other one, sorry. No. Okay, no? now we are. Now we are. I think, okay. okay. Um, so she has, uh, the Queen Mary of Romania also encouraged the women to wear the native dress on all occasions and has so persistently, persistently ignored the Paris fashions truly identified with the alluring Romanian background, whatever it would be the modern interior or of her Bucharest palace or some humble monastic retreat that grows to the Carpathians. So this is the story of inspiration for me personally. But what I um, uh, remark is that uh, today we know that the terms of influence refers to, you know, very popular 
um, public figures who are um, promoting sometimes only a product. But Queen Marie uh, was an influencer with a cause. She was a trendsetter with a cause. And um, her words written in 1920 uh, explains so, so beautifully her uh, mission in this world. We live in times when you have to allow the ordinary people to bring their contribution. The future belongs to them. And also I like the true gentlemen, the elegant and intellectual people of this world. I do feel a strong desire of walking forward with the work working people, with those people who do something. I'm a sovereign and I'm those, I'm a builder and I need to accept the help of those who can indeed help me build. An elegant dress and a conversation salon are no longer enough for me. Those vanities died with the war. They vanish along with my jewelries in Russia. I no longer have any brush, any pearls to wear. And my king, being a builder like just like me, will never again see the use of placing a tiara on my forehead. Those, please allow me to go forward without your useless diamonds. Allow me to work, work, work. Queen Marie died in 1920s. So this is a statement that really inspired me. And I think uh, Queen Marie of Romania is the original, uh, let's say, um, godmother of the Romanian blouse movement. Um, of course, her influence was immense because uh, she, as far as I know, she was the first um, um, queen uh, was featured on a Time magazine. And in that uh, no time, the Romanians, uh, the Romanian royal family, uh, it was in a, in a spotlight of, um, um, you know, not only cultural diplomacy, but diplomacy around the world. So uh, she was also the first monarch to visit the United States and the first Romanian leader to visit the US. So Her Majesty Queen Romania, uh, Queen Marie of Romania was uh, uh, welcomed in New York like this uh, almost 100 years ago. Such, uh, so I think she was maybe a kind of Princess Diana of her time, more than this. I, I, I have the courage to, to say that maybe she was more than, than a Princess Diana of her time. So from Queen Marie of Romania, it was like the mother to daughter tradition. It comes to our uh, journey, the Princess Ivlana of Romania, Mother Alexandra, because we are now we have a, um, a guest from uh, Kent State University Museum and we are so inspired by all the um, uh, blouses uh, promoted in the, uh, the Facebook page of the museum. So here is the, the journey of Queen uh, of Princess Ilana of Romania. Uh, first, she visited the United States in 1926. Uh, and as you can see, she wore only Romanian dresses and only Romanian traditional uh, coats in her visit. Um, but also she returned years ago after she was forced to leave Romania during the, you know, the, the communist uh, times. She returned uh, and she became a nun uh, and she eventually promoted uh, the Romanian cause all over the United States. And she has donated uh, uh, all her collection, uh, including Queen Marie's of Romania traditional costume to the Kent State University Museum. So uh, I can't wait to, to visit the museum and to discover all the collection. The uh, third inspiration, I guess, is Brinkush, uh, Matisse, and the modern art. Because from the influencer, here are the results. Uh, Brinkush, as you all know, was highly inspired by the Romanian folk traditions. Um, her, his maestra, the magical bird from, of the Romanian folklore, and uh, uh, Andrew's column, are, you know, um, I think pillars of the Romanian identity and then Romanian traditional identity. Uh, but also uh, what is important is the atmosphere of the Paris in 1920s. Uh, Brunkush was a friend with Matisse. Matisse was extremely inspired by the textiles from all over the, the world. She was grown up in a, 
um, um, family that you know love textiles. Uh, she was um, he, he had, he had uh, actually had a, a collection so big, uh, and when he moved from Paris to to south of France to Nice, he ordered. Uh, a new home, a new house, a new apartment for only for his textile collection. Um, so uh, the Romanian blouse was a kind of avant-garde and the result uh, was um, a kind of um, uh, metaphysics of textile transmitted from uh, Matisse's uh, vision uh, to uh, the Romanian blouse as we know today, La Blouse Romaine. The, meta, the terms of metaphysic of textile was coined by um, the Romanian corrector from the Centre Pompidou, uh, uh, Doina Lemni, uh, when she, she referred to the dream, to this one of the, the most important also over of Matisse, uh, inspired by the Romanian blouse. So with such an amazing heritage, uh, the Romanian blouse has become actually an universal icon in the in the 20s and then in the 40s when Matisse has finished his uh, work, which um, he he um, explained that was inspired by the beauty and joy and peace that the blue blouse uh, um, um, transmitted to him in uh, in moments of. Uh, um, um, in moments, I think I remember even the letter that Matisse wrote about it, uh, in moments when the, um, Europe was covered by the clouds of war, because, you know, it was exactly before the Second World War II. So here is La Blouse Roumaine, actually uh, uh, the, the name of our movement and our original inspiration. From, uh, from uh, um, arts, uh, now we are coming to culture, to, uh, uh, to fashion, as a fashion icon. And I said, not hot couture, but hot culture. So here is the, the uh, coming back of the Romanian blouse in the United States. As you know, it was uh, one of the most uh, um, iconic um, fashion uh, item in the 70s, in the 60s. And uh, here is uh, Ali McGrew uh, with, her, um, um, with her great style, inspiring a generation even now to wear these blouses. But unfortunately, most of, um, most of the, the, the promotion that was made in the 70s uh, was not connected with the brand, with the Romanian blouse, with the identity. It was only connected with fashion and also with freedom. Uh, because this is uh, somehow the Romanian blouse. It's, uh, it's coming always when we have to talk about freedom and we have to talk about inspiration and community. So uh, here are some, uh, some uh, images from the 70s when all these Romanian blouses were made actually in Romania. They were uh, made in a kind of uh, cultural fashion system where uh, cooperatives, connected with uh, anthropologists and ethnologists and also with fashion designers and also with uh, uh, fabric engineers, with uh, textile engineers, they were created this blouse, which was a phenomenon during the 70s and even in the 80s, was all over the world. And uh, Romanian cooperatives and Romanian communities uh, were working uh, hard to uh, uh, deliver the, the latest fashion uh, icon of the 70s. And of course, um, the next step, step, the next stage was haute couture. And this is the iconical collection of uh, the iconical piece of Yves Saint Laurent from 1981, uh, inspired of course by Matisse, but also inspired by the Romanian blouse because uh, Yves Saint Laurent was also an artist and um, he dedicated actually in 1999, when uh, Romania was the country, the, uh, the biggest visibility of the total eclipse of the sun in Europe, he dedicated a collection in, uh, to Romania. It was the uh, summer, yes, spring summer of 1999, and it was entitled La Blouse Romaine. 
And what Yves Saint Laurent is, uh, uh, is mentioning here is very important. And uh, I suggest that every fashion designer and every student that uh, would like to, to follow this career to read what he says, not only about Romanian blouse, but to, uh, about the traditional clothes in general. A Romanian blouse does not belong to any period. All the peasant clothes are passed down from century to century without going out of fashion. So here, in my opinion, we are on the field of a new genre of fashion, which is called cultural fashion, that has also this novelty uh, category, but also the cultural segment, which will be always there. So here is a beautiful finale for uh, Yves Saint Laurent and Letizia Casta dressed uh, with a beautiful blouse inspired by the Romanian peasant blouse, but also uh, she's a uh, Sinziana uh, somehow, <laughs> uh, having uh, uh, the harvest uh, um, uh, crops in her hands and the crown also. Uh, of course, after Yves Saint Laurent in the nineties, the story goes on and the inspiration is there until 2011, when an American designer also trained in Yves Saint Laurent style, Tom Ford, um, uh, has uh, brought another uh, version of the Romanian blouse, this time uh, with uh, the, the, the voice of the, of the uh, uh, 21st century Adele, dressed in a beautiful blouse um, on the cover of US Vogue. But, <laughs> There is a big, uh, there is a big um, uh, moment here when we discovered actually that the blouse is, uh, you know, similar with one of the, of the from our, our villages. So this is uh, this image actually um, started. Uh, what is the next phase of the Romanian blouse as a global movement? This is La Blues Romaine, the global community. Back to origins the Universal Day of the Romanian Blouse and Give Credit Movement. So this is one of, this is one of our first pictures uh, on Calea Victoria on the most uh, uh, well-known avenue in Bucharest. After so many years, people were so amazed seeing these young ladies and these young models dress in Romanian blouses again on the streets of Bucharest. It was, um, I think, April 2013. There were only a few, only 10. Now we are thousands, probably millions, who are wearing the blouse. Um, sometimes, you know, it's not so accurate because the blouse is not made in Romania, but this is not important. The most important thing that is from, from this picture made by, I think by Mihaela Norok, actually, the creator of the Atlas of Beauty, a movement has started in Romania and around the world. So these are the first images from the Romanian Blouse Day on 24th of June, 2013. These are the first images from the first exhibitions. Uh, this is in Galateca Gallery in Bucharest in partnership with the Peasant Museum in Bucharest. So for the first time, the Romanian blouses were presented as uh, pieces of art. Here are, you know, humble blouses, they are not from queens or not from, you know, uh, celebrities. They are blouses from our families with uh, an amazing stories uh, presented uh, as, as works of art. Because uh, Dr. Florica Zaharia, which, uh, which is one of the most prestigious textile experts in the world, said uh, recently, that the Romanian blouse is not traditional art, it's pure art. So a new generation has uh, uh, had a chance to, to be immersed in this kind of uh, aesthetic, in this kind of history. Uh, and we are very proud that we uh, um, created this platform that allows so many uh, children and young people to learn about their roots, to discover their culture, and to discover, you know, cultures from around the world. And this is one of the pictures that I really, really love, because it was a Romanian blouse day somewhere in uh, in Moldova, and all these boys they, they don't have they didn't have uh, uh, shirts, but they found 
from from their mothers, you know, uh, Doris, a uh, beautiful blouse, and they come with it as a statement. So this blouse is a statement for us as Romanians. And this, of course, um, is one of the most iconic pictures of the movement, uh, Bogdan and with his family and friends in front of US Capitolium in 2013 on 24th of June. And uh, probably this will belong to, to the uh, history books, Bogdan, if I'm right. Uh, and from this, uh, um, from this picture, here is in 2017. Uh, and the community is growing and uh, the movement is growing. So this is actually a very important picture because it was not only the Romanian Blouse Day, but also the Give Credit campaign. It was the support of the Romanian American community for the Give Back Credit movement. And of course, the proclamation uh, um, from the mayor of Washington, DC. And this is like the first official um, paper that we have uh, is stating that the Romanian Blouse Day is uh, actually a true universal icon. And the last, at, not at, at the least, yes, is the gift credit, because of course, with this movement, we have a, a box of Pandora, yes, if I'm right, uh, with so much enthusiasm, with so much passion, of course, uh, uh, we don't have uh, our back very well uh, protected. So uh, um, the Romanian blouse uh, is now uh, uh, appropriated by so many uh, fashion brands from around the world. And uh, the gift credit movement has started in 2017 with this uh, iconical copy paste <laughs> fashion collection made by Tory Burch. Um, as you can see, is the copy is almost identical um, with the, the Romanian coat from the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Through the um, amazing mobilization of people on social media, because we have this tool now to communicate uh, um, our, our intention and our will to protect and to preserve our cultural heritage, Actually, Tory Burch changed after a massive, massive social media campaign, changed the description of the collection with, uh, with the Romanian embroidery um, homage. So um, this is the story of June 2017. And after a few days, <laughs> another and striking copy of the uh, Romanian code from, code from Bihar, um, copied by Dior, which actually was on one of my, um, my icons in fashion. I couldn't believe this, you know? Um, and this, this uh, um, case has led us to work and to find solutions. And now thanks to this uh, great project that we are um, coordinating, Grieve Back Credit to the Heritage Communities, we aim to, to find uh, um, solutions and also to discover uh, a, a more constructive way uh, to collaborate between uh, um, fashion houses, creative industry and traditional communities. So thank you very much. This was my, my presentation and I hope you, all of you, to wear a Romanian blouse on 24th of June. Andrea, if you don't mind stopping the share of your screen, there we go. Thank you. Um, I know we have uh, far exceeded the time that we have allocated for this. Uh, I, I do want to thank all those who have followed us. We have a few questions in the Q&A that uh, I'm afraid we might will not be able to get to those uh, just because of the interest of time, especially of our um, guest speakers. Um, I do want to thank again uh, the Romanian Culture Institute for their partnership with us, and we hope that we'll have many more. And I want to thank um, Ambassador Simona Miculescu for her very colorful and always very enthusiastic remarks. That has never changed from the first day I met her uh, when I was in Washington. Um, I want to also thank Dr. Sarah Hume for her wonderful presentation. And last but not least, I want to thank Andrea for her 
just unbound energy of really promoting the Romanian blouse and being a champion. Uh, and I think uh, making this something that really has united the diaspora in a way that nothing else has, uh, that I've seen in my almost three decades out uh, living uh, away from home. Um, and this is something that really galvanized everybody. And I do wanna apologize. I know I, we have questions in the Q and A, but we have uh, far exceeded what we had uh, set as, as our time for it. And uh, I didn't wanna interrupt the wonderful presentations that everybody had put together. Um, if anybody has any last uh, remarks before we wrap up, um, this will be my uh, closing remarks, thanking everyone uh, and encouraging everybody to celebrate on June 24th, the Universal Day. Uh, in Washington, we'll celebrate on the 19th and I invite everybody to look at the uh, Romanians of DC to find us there, but also to look at your local communities to find out where and and how they're celebrating. Um, Bogdan, if I may, uh, I'd like to, uh, to congratulate all the speakers uh, for these uh, amazing presentations. It was really um, um, a display of, uh, of um, talent and uh, very, very in interesting information. Uh, I was very sure at the beginning that we will derive some important lessons from these uh, presentations and I think we can take home a lot of things about how important it is to have brands like this that bring us together and also project important values. At the same time, because we are celebrating the International uh, Day of the Blouse on, the, on June the 24th, uh, I would like to invite all our viewers uh, to see a short film that we are producing and will be broadcast um, hopefully also on the Romanians of DC um, uh, Facebook page. It's part of our permanent program that is uh, called uh, Geographies of Tradition that uh, um, uh, looks uh, in, uh, uh, in mirror, in parallel, at the Romanian traditions and American traditions. And we will be speaking about, of course, about the uh, tradition of uh, Sinziene, celebrated in uh, June the 24th, and of course about the um, uh, Romanian uh, blocks. So congratulations to all once more. Thank you, uh, Bogdan, for your amazing, amazing work in promoting our uh, values. And um, don't forget, uh, June the 24th, a short film about a great celebration. Thank you, everybody.